Krellix, field medic of the 3rd Virilian Cohort, gripped the transport shuttle's railing until his knuckles turned white. Below, an endless dull brown sea merged with this miserable planet's dust-choked horizon. This was his first interspecies deployment, and he was assigned to a unit composed exclusively of... humans. Panic fluttered in his thorax. Hadn't the commanders realized that humans were carbon-based bipeds, prone to recklessness and illogical emotion? He was a virilian, trained in precision, in the dispassionate efficiency of keeping his charges alive. His superiors had praised this as an experiment in cooperation, a testament to Virilian Concord's open-mindedness. Krellix privately suspected they meant it as a punishment for his overly critical last performance report. Everyone knew humans valued bravado over the meticulous application of healing gels. The transport shuttle lurched to a landing in a whirlwind of dust. Krellix, already nauseous, felt his carefully prepared opening address to his new unit evaporate. Before he could compose himself, the hatch hissed open, revealing the blinding glare of the desert sun and a scene of utter chaos. Humans. Dozens of them spilled out of ramshackle prefabricated buildings, their uniforms disheveled, their shouts jarring the still desert air. A hulking human with wild, sun-bleached hair thrust a battered energy rifle into Krellix's hands and slapped him hard on the back. Welcome to the party, Doc. I'm Sergeant Jackson but you can call me Jake. The human's grin was impossibly wide. Come on, orientation can wait. We've got incoming hostiles and I have a bet with Rodriguez that you'll find today to be. Jake let out a laugh. Quite intense. Krellix was shoved towards a battered transport vehicle that roared to life, spewing fumes. Humans piled inside, talking over each other seemingly oblivious to the danger. Bewildered, Krellix was handed a helmet three sizes too big and strapped unceremoniously into a seat. This wasn't medicine. This was madness. Keep your head on a swivel, Jake called up to the vehicle gunner. Who are, Sarge? The soldier replied back down as Jake settled into his seat. Hey, Krellix. Jake's eyes met Krellix's bewildered gaze. From now on, I'll be your battle buddy. Battle buddy? Krellix said slowly, a puzzling look washing across his face. Yeah, it just means that I'll be your partner, Jake began. We'll look out for each other. And when things get rough, I got your back, no matter what. You tracking? Krellix looked baffled, but nodded in understanding as Sergeant Jackson smiled back before signaling the driver to take off. Krellix's meticulously prepared med kit bounced forgotten on the floor as the transport lurched across the dunes. Krellix's training told him to assess his supplies, prepare possible triage scenarios, and calculate ideal distances for emergency extractions. Instead, he was forced to focus on not losing his segmented lunch over the human driver's reckless maneuvers. Incoming! Jake roared, laughter bubbling inexplicably in his voice. Thirty hostiles, light armor. Looks like those Sakari raiders are getting ballsy again. Hey, Doc! He yelled over his shoulder. Hope you're a quick study. The humans were already piling out of the transport before it came to a complete halt. Krellix, legs wobbling, emerged to witness a scene of pure bedlam. Energy weapons flashed, the sharp tang of ozone filling the air. The humans moved as if every action was pre-choreographed, covering each other with an ease born only of long-shared experience. Yet, there were also flashes of improvisational brilliance. One human used her empty weapon as a club, while another upended an abandoned supply crate and used it as a makeshift cover. His training screamed at him. This was illogical, inefficient, and incredibly dangerous. Where was the formation, and what was the focus on strategic positioning? Then, a human with a plasma burn across his arm stumbled back, his eyes wide with a mix of pain and manic determination. Patch me up, Doc, he barked. Can't have the Sarge win that bet with Rodriguez. Instincts took over. 
Krellix was kneeling beside the wounded soldier before he consciously realized it. The standard-issue med kit felt foreign in his hands, the soothing hum of the auto-cauterizer almost lost in the din of the skirmish. Yet he worked with surprising speed. Humans healed similarly enough to Virilians, though the sheer resilience of their bodies was unnerving. As he sealed the wound, the soldier was already scrambling back to his feet, flinging a grin over his shoulder. Thanks, Doc. You ain't half bad for a newbie. Krellix watched, astounded, as the injured human rejoined the fray. It defied all logic. On the Virilian front lines, a warrior so hastily patched would be sent for extended regenerative therapy. Yet here they were, treating life-threatening wounds as inconveniences rather than reasons for proper medical withdrawal. The rest of the skirmish was a blur. Krellix treated wounds inflicted with a recklessness that bordered on suicide. Humans sprinted through enemy fire to drag injured comrades to safety, yelling a mix of encouragement and insults all the while. He lost track of how often he applied emergency field dressings, dermal regenerators, and hasty splints, guided more by gut instinct born of necessity than his usual clinical precision. When the last raider lay sprawled on the sand, the humans didn't retreat to regroup or call for medevacs for their wounded. Instead, a raucous cheer went up, followed immediately by... Laughter. Soldiers who had dodged death mere minutes ago were recounting the battle as if it were a sporting event, poking fun and teasing each other about near misses. Sergeant Jake hauled himself next to Krellix, a fresh bandage adorning his own shoulder. So, Doc, he said, his grin a challenge. How was your first taste of real medicine? Real? Krellix sputtered in outrage. He was about to launch into a scathing critique of human battlefield practices, their disregard for self, the inefficiency, the emotional volatility. But the words died in his throat. He looked around at the humans. They were dirty, battered, and utterly exhausted. Their uniforms were torn, their weapons scorched. Yet in their eyes wasn't the cold satisfaction he associated with Virilian warriors post-battle. Instead, there was an undeniable warmth, a bond forged in the heart of this strange, beautiful chaos. Suddenly, the memory of a phrase from his human studies textbook resurfaced. Pack mentality. Humans form intense social bonds with their units, increasing loyalty and protective instincts. Krellix hadn't understood it while safely ensconced on his homeworld. He understood it now. Krellix of the Virilian Concord was a healer. These humans, they weren't just reckless warriors, they were shields for each other. And Krellix, amidst the swirling sand and echoing blaster fire, realized he'd found his place among their ranks. It was... He hesitated, searching for the right word, not in his native Virilian, but in the rough human dialect. Intense, Sergeant. Jake's booming laugh rolled across the dunes. You ain't seen nothing yet, Doc. Incoming wounded. Jake's eyes twinkled. Rodriguez owes me fifty credits. Humans might be perplexing, illogical, and utterly confounding, but Krellix was starting to suspect this assignment wouldn't be a punishment after all. It might be the most challenging, terrifying, and strangely exhilarating deployment of his career. As he dived back into the fray, a grin began to tug tentatively at the corner of his chitinous mouth. Days turned into weeks. Krellix lost track of time in the relentless tempo of the human outpost. Battles erupted with startling frequency. Skirmishes with raiders, defense against opportunistic territorial attacks by larger factions, and harrowing rescue missions deep into hostile territory. The human disregard for their own injuries still made his mandibles twitch with disapproval, but he gained a grudging respect for their sheer toughness. Wounds that would send a Virilian to the infirmary for weeks were shrugged off, and soldiers returned to battle with barely healed scars that they wore as marks of pride. 
Initially stocked with Virilian precision instruments, his med bay was slowly morphing into a strange hybrid. Krellix found himself requesting shipments of simple field supplies, rolls of bandages, splints of varying sizes, and an alarming quantity of painkiller injections. He learned to seal wounds with unnerving speed, mimicking the efficiency born of necessity that the humans had mastered. Gone were the calming sounds of his virilian healing suite, replaced with the constant hum of life support machines and the boisterous, often off-key singing of wounded humans trying to keep their spirits up. Krellix became part of their rhythm by sheer force of adaptation. He began anticipating supply needs, pre-packing kits for the unit's relentlessly mobile medics. He even found himself echoing the human's crude but effective battlefield triage techniques, a shift in mindset that would have scandalized his superiors. His reports back to the Concord became increasingly sparse, filled with observations that bordered on the anthropological rather than purely medical. Then came the battle that changed everything. Intelligence reports were sketchy, a large force massing on the sector's edge, not raiders, but a well-organized enemy with armored vehicles and heavy weaponry. Sergeant Jake for once looked grim. This isn't some skirmish, Doc, he said, his usual easy grin absent. This could be the one that breaks us. The humans prepared with a strange mix of meticulousness and frenzied improvisation. Krellix watched, fascinated, as they jury-rigged defenses, welded armor scavenged from derelict vehicles, and modified civilian mining equipment into weapons. They weren't scared, that much was obvious, but there was a sharp undercurrent of tension beneath their usual bravado. When the enemy arrived, Krellix realized just how outmatched they were. His medical training was superb, but it hadn't prepared him for the sheer scale of the assault. Plasma fire rained down, flaring the outpost's hastily assembled shields under the onslaught. Humans went down, not with shouts of bravado, but with chillingly silent determination. The medbay was a scene out of a nightmare. Krellix and other medics worked tirelessly, pushing his stamina past limits he hadn't known he possessed. Yet, for every human he stabilized, two more were carried in, their wounds catastrophic. He'd been trained for war, but not this kind of carnage. Fall back, Doc, Jake roared, appearing in the med bay, his armor blackened. Orders just came in to pull out. I will not, Krellix began, but Jake's eyes silenced him. Your job isn't to be a martyr, Doc. Jake's voice was rough, tinged with exhaustion that cut through even human resilience. Your job is to keep us in the fight. We retreat. We survive. We fight another day. It was the closest thing to an order Krellix had received, and it went against every fiber of his being. Yet a battlefield sense he'd unknowingly honed was screaming at him. Jake was right. The retreat was agonizing, a desperate dash across a blasted landscape. Krellix protected the most grievously wounded, humans helping humans, their shouts of defiance echoing even as they withdrew. Back at what was left of their outpost, Jake surveyed the survivors. There were so few, a despair unlike any he'd ever felt settled on Krellix. But as he looked at the humans, bloodied but unbowed, he noticed something strange. In their eyes, alongside the weariness and grief, there flickered a cold fire. It was a look he'd never seen before. A terrible, beautiful thing that chilled him, even as a strange sense of awe crept through his veins. It ain't over, Jake growled, his voice a near whisper that carried the weight of a thousand battles. We lost today, Doc, but we ain't lost yet. Krellix expected a plan, a daring counteroffensive, perhaps a desperate plea for reinforcements. Instead, the humans began to dismantle what remained of their outpost. They salvaged everything. Damaged weapons, broken shield generators, even the twisted metal of destroyed vehicles. What are you doing? Krellix demanded, a note of virilian officiousness creeping back into his voice. 
we must establish a new defensible position. A human medic, Specialist Ramirez, chuckled darkly. Defending's gotten us nowhere, Doc. Time for a different approach. For days, they moved like nomads across the wasted landscape. Jake led them to hidden caches, forgotten supply dumps from long-gone conflicts. The humans rebuilt, not with the clean lines and precise engineering they'd favored before, but with a rough, desperate creativity. They cobbled together weapons that shouldn't have worked, repurposed mining lasers into blinding spotlights, and even turned scrap metal into cruelly effective traps. Krellix felt increasingly like an observer amidst this whirlwind of activity. His med kit became lighter daily, and its contents were now cruder than clinical. He was tending wounds inflicted not just by enemy forces, but by the unforgiving desert and the humans' own reckless ingenuity as they tested their makeshift arsenal. Logic screamed that this was madness, yet a sense of anticipation began to worm its way into his usually clinical outlook. The humans were no longer preparing to defend. They were preparing to hunt. When the order came... It was almost anticlimactic. A scout had tracked the enemy back to their temporary base. Jake turned towards his unit, his eyes glittering with that strange, cold fire Krellix knew meant only one thing. Saddle up, he said, his voice low. It's payback time. The attack wasn't a battle. It was an ambush. Krellix barely had time to process the sheer audacity it took for this depleted unit to attack a vastly superior force. Guided by their intimate knowledge of the terrain, the humans struck like vipers. Blinded by repurposed spotlights, the enemy floundered, shattering their disciplined formations. Traps, so simple yet devastatingly effective, wreaked havoc, taking out vehicles and sending enemy troops into panicked disarray. Krellix, carried along more by momentum than any conscious choice, found himself not behind the lines but amidst the strike force. The humans, each movement honed by countless shared battles, protected him with an unconscious ease. He patched wounds in the flickering shadows and dragged injured humans out of harm's way, a guttural roar of outrage escaping him when an enemy soldier strayed too close to his charges. The enemy broke, not with honor, but with the howl of the hunted. As the humans descended upon their abandoned supplies, a grim satisfaction spread through their ranks. Krellix treated their wounds from the counterattack, the injuries far less severe this time. The humans were alive. They had won against impossible odds. Later that night, as the humans feasted on captured rations, Jake found him amidst the flickering fires. He offered Krellix a battered tin mug filled with some sort of stinging, potent liquid. Victory brew, Jake said with a wink. We ain't picky out here, Doc. Thanks, battle buddy, Krellix said slowly with a smile on his face. No problem, battle, replied Jake with a reassuring nod. Krellix took a hesitant sip, the harshness making him cough. Yet... A strange warmth spread through him, a loosening of the rigid certainty with which he'd always viewed the universe. You fought bravely today, Jake said, and for the first time, Krellix heard genuine approval in the human's voice. I did my duty, Krellix replied, falling back on familiar phrases. But he knew that wasn't the whole truth even as he spoke. He had saved lives, yes. But somewhere within the chaos and carnage, Krellix of the Virilian Concord had changed. He was still a healer, but now a healer forged in the fires lit by relentless human spirit. And perhaps, just perhaps, the galaxy would be a little bit safer for it.